Hi, my name is Bahavati and I'm a PhD student at University College Dublin. My research is in the area of developing time series techniques for making return to play predictions using wearable sensor data. When an athlete is injured, a decision needs to be made as to when they are ready to return to play in order to manage the risk of them re-injuring themselves. By analyzing the motion behavior of a person whilst they are doing functional exercises such as lunges or squats, insights into their recovery can be gained. Wearable sensors uh, such as inertial measurement units or IMUs allow us to digitally capture the key features of these exercises as motion capture data, which can then be used to train models to characterize the various stages of recovery of the athlete which in turn can help clinicians to make better informed decisions on when an athlete is um, ready to return to play. In particular, this motion capture data will be used to interrogate the possibility of using such models for anterior cruciate ligament injuries and any subsequent corrective surgery. The data captured from these sensors are time series and are typically high frequency and high dimension as there will be multiple sensors, each collecting multiple channels of data. And in sports science, there will often be multiple repetitions of the same exercise as well. To deal with this, we have been working in areas such as data aggregation and feature subset selection. Trying to answer questions like, how can we aggregate multiple time series into one whilst retaining the required information? And how can we select parts of our model, uh, parts of our data, I should say, to input into our model to improve performance and efficiency of the model? Within the multidimensional time series that we have, there exists correlation in the data which means that there is some data which is redundant and may not be necessary for our model. We tackle this problem using time series based feature selection techniques to identify which parts of our time series we should use to train our models. From this, we can initially provide insights to physios on what information is most important. So to be able to simplify the data collection process. Finally, we hope to work towards developing models that will enable us to provide insights about the motion behavior after injury in a step towards helping the clinician to make an informed decision on when an injured athlete is fit and ready to return to play. Thank you very much.